Hi guys! I don't know about you, but for me, in this current situation, there seem to be fewer hours in a day than there used to be. So today I'm coming to you again, not with any sort of well thought out, elaborate review video, but with one of those favorites videos that I've done a few of recently. This time it's favorite first lines. I have three disclaimers to make before I start. One, I reserve the right to skip prologues or not skip them as I see fit. Two, some books have stunning first lines, but the rest of them turns out to be not that great. And in those cases, I won't have kept the book and I wouldn't have been able to look it up on my shelves. So this video might actually be missing some of the best first lines in literature that I have read. And three, I originally meant to include only English titles in this video and only English first lines, just because it's simpler for all of us, but it just so happens that the most fabulous opening line in all of literature ever is in Spanish, and I just could not not include this title and this line in this video. And I thought, oh well, since I already have a Spanish title, I might as well throw in some German ones as well. It's only three titles, if I have counted correctly, and I will put them at the end of the video. So on to the books. Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. All this happened, more or less. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. The Hours by Michael Cunningham. There were still the flowers to buy. Reading in the Dark by James Dean. On the stairs there was a clear, plain silence. And yes, I'm going there. 1984 by George Orwell. It was a bright cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I write this sitting in the kitchen sink. The Sellout by Paul Beatty. This may be hard to believe coming from a black man, but I've never stolen anything. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. It seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition that has been preoccupying my imagination now for some days. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle The unicorn lived in a lilac wood, and she lived all alone. The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater it was freezing in the churchyard, even before the dead arrived. The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman There was a hand in the darkness, and it held a knife. The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch At the height of the long wet summer of the 77th year of San Giovanni, the thief-maker of Camorra paid a sudden and unannounced visit to the eyeless priest at the Temple of Perilandro, desperately hoping to sell him the Lamora boy. Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas To begin at the beginning, it is spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black, the cobbled streets silent and the hunched quarters and rabbits wood limping invisible down to the slow black, slow, black, crow black, fishboat bobbing sea. The Wild Places by Robert McFarlane the wind was rising, so I went to the wood. No first lines video is complete without Shakespeare. Twelfth night, if music be the food of love, play on. And arguably the master of opening lines, Charles Dickens. I'll spare you the monster first sentence of A Tale of Two Cities. You know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Although I love it as much as the next person. Not that Oliver Twist is much better. 
among other public buildings in a certain town, which for many reasons it will be prudent to refrain from mentioning and to which I will assign no fictitious name, there is one anciently common to most towns, great or small, to wit, a workhouse. And in this workhouse was born on a day and date which I need not trouble myself to repeat in as much as it can be of no possible consequence to the reader in this stage of the business at all events, the item of mortality whose name is prefixed to the head of this chapter. David Copperfield whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. And a Christmas carol. Marley was dead to begin with. And this is the end of the English part of this collection of books, but I only have three short quotes in German and Spanish, so please do stay on. My first German book is Schlafes Bruder, Brother of Sleep by Robert Schneider. Das ist die Geschichte des Musikers Johannes Elias Alder, der 22-jährig sein Leben zu Tode brachte, nachdem er beschlossen hatte, nicht mehr zu schlafen. And Lumen by Christoph Marzi. Die Welt ist gierig und manchmal umschließen Nebel unsere Herzen, bis wir uns nicht einmal mehr daran erinnern können, wann unsere Träume zu sterben begannen. And now my favorite opening line in all of literature ever, which I am so going to butcher with my horrible accent, is from Cien Años de Soledad. Um, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Muchos años después, frente al pelotón de fusilamiento, el coronel Aureliano Buendía había de recordar aquí a tarde remota en que su padre lo llevó a conocer el hielo. Apparently this translates as, or has been translated as, Many years later, as he faced the firing squad, Colonel Aureliano Buendia was to remember that distant afternoon when his father took him to discover ice. I don't know, I'd like the Spanish version better. Okay, that's it for now. I think I might try and do a favorite last lines video sometime in the near future. I hope this has been entertaining and I hope that my accent hasn't been too distracting. Tell me some of your favorite first lines and maybe even some of your favorite last lines in the comments below. I hope you are doing well and staying safe and all that. Bye!